So there was a, a recent paper by Pickering and Gergic. Uh, the title is, Is Coffee a Useful Source of Caffeine Pre-Exercise? And uh, basically what they, what they concluded, I'm jumping right to the highlights here. They said there's limited evidence that caffeinated coffee has the potential to offer ergogenic effects similar to those of caffeine anhydrous, which is basically just supplemental caffeine. Um, at first I read that and I thought they were saying like that there's a lack of evidence. I think what, what they're getting at is there is some evidence, but it'd be great if there were more. There aren't that many studies looking at coffee specifically as an ergogenic aid, but uh, what we have would indicate that it is pretty equivalent uh, in terms of its ergogenic effects. Um, and what they also noted was that co-ingesting caffeine with decaffeinated coffee. So if for some reason a person in the world were inclined to have decaf coffee and mix some caffeine into it, um, the decaffeinated coffee does not detract from the ergogenic effect of the caffeine. Now, the only reason I bring this up, we've talked about caffeine plenty on the podcast. The reason I bring it up is nerds like Greg will always talk about, you know, it's just a single study. Let's wait and make sure it gets replicated and all that stuff, right? Single study, you don't want to get too carried away. This is a perfect example. So in 1998, Graham et al., did a study and they tested several different treatments. It was a placebo, uh, a caffeine capsule alone, regular coffee with caffeine in it, just a normal cup of coffee, decaf coffee. And then the final treatment was decaf coffee with a caffeine capsule. Okay. Um, all of the treatments aside from the placebo, obviously, uh, and the decaf coffee, provided 4.45 milligrams per kilogram of caffeine. It's a pretty standard uh, ergogenic caffeine dose. The only group out of all of those that improved uh, was water plus a caffeine capsule. So the regular coffee didn't work, and the decaf with the caffeine capsule also didn't work. Um, and so what they theorized was that something in the coffee was inhibiting the beneficial effects of caffeine and they, they thought maybe it was the chlorogenic acids. But I mean, with coffee, it's like, take your pick. There's like hundreds of bioactive compounds in it. We essentially ran with that conclusion for like 15 years to the, to the point that as late as like 2010 in review papers, they would say like, yeah, if you want to get an ergogenic effect, it can't be from coffee. You got to get the good stuff, the caffeine anhydrous. So this is like a, a real world example of where for I think about 15 years, we took this one study and said, well, looks fine to me and just went with it. Um, and then it wasn't really until 2013 that a few studies started reinvestigating that question and it kind of just went the other direction. You know, there, there's still, we could certainly use more uh, data related to this particular question, but from what we have in the last few years, there have been more studies coming out. There's one by Hodgson et al. There's one by Richardson and Clark. My lab group did a paper on the topic. And generally speaking, what we find with some of this more recent research is that caffeinated coffee seems to be just fine in comparison to a caffeine supplement, which intuitively makes sense, but is actually uh, a controversial take, or at least it was up until about a couple years ago. So this is a, a real world world example of uh, when people like Greg want to be a stick in the mud and they say, hold, hold your horses. Let's see if that actually replicates. This is an example of that. However, I, I will uh, note that um, Pickering and Gergic in this paper, they bring up some good points. There are some challenges with coffee. If you're using coffee and trying to get ergogenic doses of caffeine, sometimes that requires you to ingest a pretty high volume of fluid. Um, so for some people, that might be annoying pre-workout having a bunch of coffee. Obviously, you can go to some uh, you know, more concentrated coffee-type products with higher caffeine content. But uh, another thing to keep in mind is variability of caffeine content. So the type of bean, how it's roasted, how finely it's ground, how it's prepared— all of these things go into the actual caffeine content of the coffee you're drinking. So if you're trying to get an exact ergogenic dose for a really big competition, that's something to keep in mind. Um, and a great example of that is a study by McCusker et al. They got the same product from a coffee shop six days in a row. So same product, 
same location. It was Starbucks, right? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. And uh, of those six days, the lowest caffeine content of this product was 259 milligrams, and the highest was 564. So um, that's a hell of a range. I mean, th- those are two very different experiences from that cup of coffee, right? So um, it's something to keep in mind if you're going to use uh, coffee as a regular ergogenic aid. I do. You know, I think it's fine. Uh, but if you're like, let's say it's day one of the Olympic trials and you're trying to make sure you've got your, your caffeine dose perfectly titrated, then it might make sense to go with something else. Um, brand new study that is not super relevant, but I found it fascinating. This came out like a week or two ago by Fukuda. Um, the title is Habitual Coffee Drinkers uh, May Present Conditioned Responses from Coffee Q. And this was a study in, I believe it was in the field of psychology. This isn't like a performance fitness type thing, but I found it interesting. The sight and smell of coffee alone, they didn't ingest any of it. it they basically were just like, okay, smell it. You see it? Here's some coffee. Take it away. Uh, that alone appeared to enhance performance on a simple reaction time task in habitual coffee drinkers. So it was one of those things where um, if you believe that your love for coffee has gotten to the point where simply being in its presence is a positive thing for you, uh, apparently these people got a a benefit from just smelling and seeing it. 